Hi readers, this is Johnny Hunkins at Popular Hot Riding Magazine. And today we're going to show you how to make a custom shifter plate for a powertrain control solutions push button shifter. Now Bill Richmond here is one of the best fabricators in our area. He's been doing this for decades. And the mark of a good fabricator is that in his head, he knows exactly what he wants to do. And we sort of have to watch it unfold here. Basically, here's the original uh, shifter plate that goes on our console. Here's the template he's using out of that uh, flexible cardboard. And there's the shifter that we have from Powertrain Control Solutions. Now, that's going to mount onto the fabricated piece. And then we've decided to put a cup holder right there. So he's mocking it out, making his moves, and he's a little bit at a time sort of cutting away and bending the template because he wants to get the template just right before he starts messing around with any metal because that's when it gets serious. Well, Bill is working this template with the brake that he's usually uses for metal brake, but uh, in this case it actually is helping to form the template as well too. So what's going on here, Bill? Well, this is our piece and I made it kind of so we can get a game plan. This is probably going to sit like that kind of in an angle right there. And then right here, up front here, kind of got to get in the middle here, uh, it's going to be a cup holder. Right on. That's going to be very cool. So. Great. That should be pretty good. Well, Bill's got the pattern the way he wants pretty much and he's just tracing it out on some aluminum stock and he's going to cut it in the shear here. And those are the marks for the bends.
Let's go take a look, see how it fits. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, mark it out to make the side pieces out of our excess. We're going to put that there, put a little mark there so we know where we're going to go. We're going to take a straight edge, go from point A to point B. Then we're going to shear it, and hopefully we have a side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first cut, which is the front, which is actually the rear side right here, and then I'm going to cut the bottom, which will be our bottom piece. What I was attempting to do is basically make voila, one side piece. What I'm doing is I'm getting ready to weld some kind of tapered in so the weld will stay in there. We've got the sides on our console block off plate fabricated and Scott Etheridge here at RRC is going to TIG weld the end to the unit. This little piece right here is going to be spacer that will give just the right amount of standoff to the front of the plate. Screws are two screws, and then we'll put this piece here. That. That'll fit in a hole that you're going to make for it. Yep, but we'll put your cup holder there. Great. Got to have the cup holder. Yep. Wow, that looks really cool, Bill. It looks like uh, you've taken something that looks like a rough and tumble weld and made it look really smooth on the outside. What have you done here? Well, we ground it with 36 grit to knock down our weld and everything else. We also use this uh, plastic. It's like a, a wax that will fill the grinding disc and keep the disc from getting used up and clogging up. And it helps save the disc and it helps actually grind the aluminum a little quicker. Oh, that's very cool. So what do we do next? Well, next down that's ground, we'll just maybe round off some edges here. Uh, maybe we'll look to uh, actually 
get the holes drilled in it so we can mount it, and then we'll look to cut out our hole and, of course, get that all-important cup holder mounted. Excellent. Okay, what I'm doing here is I had a curve, so I'm just trying to bring the curve back into it a little bit so it fits nice and flush on the console originally. Yeah, that console's got a little curvature in it. We didn't show anybody, but it's very subtle, and we want it to fit pretty much flush with the top of the console. Let's show the end of it. Oh, that looks good. A little hammer and dolly action there. Yep, well, I used a T dolly. Well, it looks like you've just made a paper template or a pattern that uh, perfectly replicates the top of the uh, shifter. Uh, what's going on there, Bill? Well, what I did is I made a paper pattern. I mean, it's, it's, it's close. It's not perfect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it to the aluminum, put it in the correct position I want, get it centered in the piece, and then we'll cut it out. Then we can file it so this, because it has a step in it, if you look around the edge of the step, that way this piece will set up in there, and then we can put our four screws to taper it in and mount it, and then we'll have to put that all-important cup holder. Well, it looks like you've got your pattern laid out and centered on your workpiece. And are you ready to cut it out now, Bill? Yeah, we're going to start cutting out the center, and then we'll work our way to the outside. It's easier to take off as much as we need, not trying to put it back. Fits pretty good, huh? All right. What I'm doing now is I'm scribing the back so I can do the screw holes. And then we'll drill them from the back, countersink it, then we can bolt her in. That should look like that. Well, Scott's getting ready to do our favorite uh, part. He's putting a cup holder on there. We took uh, a three inch piece of aluminum pipe and uh, we cut off probably about three and a half, four inches of it and we're going to weld it on there. What Bill is doing is making some countersunk holes for the controller unit. The We've actually got some 832 fine thread countersunk bolts that are going through there and using this countersink and going right through there. And you can see it's going to be flush, that bolt, bolt head's going to be flush with the top of that piece. How tight that is, how flat with the surface that is. Well, Bill is trial fitting the plate onto the console. Now that he's got the holes drilled and countersunk for the factory fasteners. And let's hope that we don't jinx it. Looking pretty good. Now, coming in home stretch here with our shifter plate. And uh, we've got the 8 32 inch fine thread countersunk screws going into the, the shifter. 
and uh, Bill's probably going to put it in the car in a little bit to see if there's any clearance issues with the console underneath. But people just don't realize how much work goes into a piece like this. It looks so simple when you see it on a car, but, you know, this is about six hours worth of work, and uh, if you have a craftsman do it like this at a shop, it's going to take about six hours. It's going to pay about six hours worth of labor for something like this, not including the uh, materials. And one of the things about this shifter is it does have an electronic con connector on the back there, and we have to make sure there's enough room to fit it and fit in there. And wow, it does fit in there without any problems, and uh, that's good. We don't have to we don't have to hack on the console underneath it to make it fit. Well, we just gave our shifter plate. A coating of duplicolor vinyl fabric dye, dye in the flat black. That's actually what we used for the rest of the interior. And we used the heat gun on it to get it dried. And uh, we're going to try it out here again shortly, as soon as it's done drying. Wow, that sucker looks really good, Bill. All painted up and uh, finished looks like part of the car like it was designed to be there and that's what you aim for whenever you do custom fabrication like this this is a job well done